everyone, welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we are going to finally start setting up our battling properly now. So in the last episode we looked at our battle UI, um, which I have currently closed. That's helpful, isn't it? Um, I'll just quickly just show it. I'm not going to go through it. If you want to go through it, check the last episode out. Um, it's in here. And um, we basically set up our buttons ready to start using them. Um, what I've now gone ahead and done is I've called that button press, um, which is you just come down here, you find the button you want, so move slot one button, and I've done on clicked or on pressed, either one, it really doesn't matter. Um, I found that using either one of them, because I've got on pressed and on clicked, because I'm weird like that, <laughs> they both work, so it really shouldn't matter too much which one you're calling. The next thing I have done is I have created a battle UI BPI to be able to talk between something new that we're going to set up today. Um, but this is just very simple. Um, it's just checking to see if it's been pressed. There's no inputs or outputs. It's just literally wants to call this function um, as and when we need it. We don't need to put anything through it or out of it at this point in time. It's just purely there to talk to one another in the level. Before I move on to the, the BPI level though, I just want to open up the level blueprints. I'm not sure if I covered this. I'm, I'm like 90% sure I did, but if I didn't, you probably a lot of you are like, oh, it's broken, I don't know what's going on, help me. Um, <laughs> but there is, this is, I, someone got stuck around uh, episode 12 or 13, um, not even that far behind, but I will redirect everyone to this episode um, if anyone else gets stuck on 12 and 13, because... Um, you will need this. It's um, an event begin play. It's got the sequence and it's just checking to see if the party slot um, against user index 201 is true. If it is, it gets it loads that save, casts to the party save game, it gets the third person character. And it's just setting that ring mom party, the player location, the player rotation, and it's checking to see if I have a Pokemon uh, or ring mom. And then it's coming down here and it's just setting the camera. Uh, now these figures are what works for me yours won't be the same necessarily but this is how I get this angle um, this setup angle and it will always face this direction because of those figures that I've used um, that's that um, the next thing we want to do is go into our map and check out that level bl blueprint grass battle level yeah <clears throat> Uh, save selected, yes. So, 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 so. Currently, we have what we set up uh, a few episodes ago. Um, there's nothing behind here because the camera will never face this direction. It's just them. It would just be a waste. Unless you wanted like a rotating camera that like kind of at, when you're idle it just kind of rotates around the battle. It's not necessary. So what I've done is I've right clicked and I've created a new blueprint class and I've created a battle proxy target. What this battle proxy target does is it holds all the information for the battle within it. So that when we, we push a button on our UI that sends a message to our battle proxy here to... Um, do uh, an event, right? These events are all the same. It's just deciding what button was what. Um, and it works all out from there. So it's very, it's a lot. It looks, look at it, it's crazy, right? I'm going to streamline this and make it a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to think of ways where I can just have one line of code and not four exactly the same codes from one button, button press. Um, I have got an idea, um, but I haven't tested it yet, uh, so I will need to do that. And But the idea is that if I do that, it will make um, everything run a little bit better. I um, But let's just take a look at this now. So we have this battle proxy. What are we going to do with it, right? So we want it to spawn in this world somewhere when we start the encounter. And then when we leave, it, it needs to be destroyed. 
So let's go to our level BP first. Sorry, I do know what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just trying to think of the order of which I want to show you guys so it makes sense. So in this here, we're obviously always um, we're always running this code um, that's spawning the encounter that's spawning our player in and then this here no it's not that's spawning our party ringmon in and then this is spawning our player in now you'll notice i've already got rid of the um creating the battle ui widget that happens now in the battle proxy uh which i'll show you in a second um so it, all it's doing now is spawning the player setting our input mode showing mouse cursor and then it's spawning our battle proxy. Now, it doesn't matter where it spawns it, so you don't need to worry about any of this. You just need to put in your battle proxy um, here, your target, put this here. And this will spawn in to our world. Um, the other thing I've done in the battle UI, because I noticed it was happening a little slow, was I put a delay in here. It was happening too fast, you're saving. It was happening too fast. Uh, and it wasn't loading everything up in, in uh, correctly. I'm, I'm going to change it, lower it down to 0 0.2. Hopefully that will still allow it to build everything in time um, before it breaks. Uh, we'll test that in a second. Um, <clears throat> and with that set up, all we do in our battle proxy on the event begin play is um, we call that widget, right? We create the new widget. We, I am setting uh, it as a um, variable. So just drag off and promote to variable. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to call this to update like um, some of our UI down the line. Uh, and then we add it to our viewport. Because the otherwise, the only time it'll ever update is when we enter a new encounter. Well, that's no good to us because we want to know where our enemy's health's at. We want to know where our player's health's at, all that sort of good stuff. So it's, it's good to have this set so we can call it later on down the line. Um, uh, and then the, I'll, I'll get to the point where we get to our speed check and then I'll, I'll carry on from the next episode. So when we press a button, again, I'm casting to the third person character because I need these values from here to drive everything that happens in here. And then at the end, we need to reset. We don't need to reset our current ringmon, but we will need to reset our uh, ringmon party eventually. So we call a third person character and then we're going to go into a speed check now. The reason we're doing a speed check is because we need to know who's going first. Is the player going first or is the enemy going first? Uh, and then we do a branch to, to kind of go off. Now these are camera controls. It was the best way I could figure out to do it at this point in time because you can't call um, your cameras in the world to your, um, to your uh, BP. You have to call it to your level blueprint. So if we go back to the level blueprint, up here on an event tick it's just checking i know that's an expensive way of doing it but it's only happening during battles uh and i'm not calling any other event ticks it's just checking for the which camera is active so if the party is active it'll come back true and it'll set that to the the camera to the player ringmon if the enemy uh is active it'll set it to the enemy ringmon camera um and if uh if another none of those are active it'll reset it back to where our main camera is, we can see everything. That's very simple setup. It's kind of an expensive setup because of the event tick, but it, it works flawlessly so far. So I'm kind of happy with it. Um, I might change it down the line, but there's no, it has to be done in the level BP, which isn't great. So um, we'll have to keep it for now until I can think of a better way of doing it. Um, but let's go back to our battle widget. So that's what, not a battle widget, sorry, our battle your uh, no, no, battle proxy, there we go. So that's what's happening with these. So it's setting the party to active, so it's focusing now in on our player. The idea is that the player montage, it'll, it'll play like an attack montage, so it'll do something. Uh, there might be a particle effect coming here afterwards, depending on what we're using. And then we do our attack. Now, th there's a bit of an issue with my ordering at the moment, because it's not perfect at this point. I'm still working on the enemy attacks. Um, but there should be, in theory, we should now set this here. So reset the cameras here where we then do like the enemy gets a, does an attack kind of, um, montage. 
Um, and then have this, is the enemy dead or not? And then if it is dead, we can then play a new animation where it maybe shrinks or just disappears. Um, and then we carry on normal. Or if it's not dead, we can then move into it just doing its attack. So we don't need to change cameras. It can just do its attack. And then we'd switch cameras again, back to the player who will take damage and then we'll do the checks. But we haven't got that far yet. So let's go back a bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, so we're casting for the third person character to get this third person character variable so we can drive things down the line. Uh, we're then doing a speed check. So this goes straight into the speed check. Um, now again, a lot of this isn't perfect because I need to um, update things, streamline it, streamline it a little bit, and go from uh, you know, and just make general improvements. There's also things like uh, uh, ring mon switches and stuff like that, which I need to still set up. So it, it's set up to just get it working, so we can actually start killing stuff and leveling up. This is where I'm at at the moment, and then I need to just sort of make it better and also add extra things in down the line. But for now, we're just setting our current Ringmon and our Ringmon party. Throw them our third person character. That way, whatever our information is, it's always going to be correct to this. Okay? So, um, once we've done that, we're checking for the Ringmon. Now, this check is just doing a very basic health check. In the sense that it's going to slot one, because we always send out the first Ringmon in the party. So, we get our slot one we check its health so we're literally breaking out our party info breaking our final stats and we're getting our health is our health over one is it equal to or over one and if that's true we set that as our selected slot if not we'll go down to slot two is slot two got health yes set that as a selected slot you get the idea it goes down all, all six of them until we know how many we have uh, we, we, till we know which one is got has got enough health that we can send it out. Now, if we got to this and there was nothing, well, we couldn't fight anyway. We'd have automatically gone back to heal. So there should always be, in this scenario, there should always be one that has health. And then if that one loses health, that's when we need to then know um, to run from the battle and, and not re-enter a battle. So for now, this is working fine. I don't know how I could streamline this, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right. So once we've picked our Ringmon from our Ringmon selector, we're going to pull off that information and we're going to get the party in for exactly the same thing again, break it down to get the final stats, uh, break that again to get the speed, and the speed goes in to here. We then pull off from our current Ringmon, break his stats, get his final stats, and get his speed. And all we're doing is we're saying, is this speed greater than this speed? If it's true, we know the player is going to go first. If this speed is less than our encounter speed, the encounter is going to go first. Now, we also need to do one final check to make sure the speeds are the same. Because if they are the same, we want to... Now, I could have done this as actually thinking about this. One way I could have streamlined this a little better is I could have said, is it equal to this speed or greater than this speed? But I've done it as an equal, equal. It works exactly the same. But equal, equal, are our speeds equal? Yes. Then the player goes first. And then it fires out all that information. I also just realized that it's not, I've not set one of these nodes. So actually I'm going to do this now. Let's do this. Let's streamline now. Let's do it now, right? So we can get rid of this. Uh, we can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. And all I want to do is get a less equal to, no, equal or greater, equal or greater node. And we can just literally grab these off by holding down control. We can just grab these off and um, then plug this in. So now what it's doing, I've, I've already streamlined my code, guys. Look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> Making it shorter and better as we speak. Um, so now what's happening is it's going to check to see if these speed values are the same or if they're higher. So if they are the same or higher, we'll go first. 
um, if our value is less than what his value is then he will go first okay that's literally the simplest way I could think of doing this um, it's this is probably the best code I've got out of the whole thing <laughs> the rest is an absolute mess but um, let's see how we get on so yeah so basically all that's happening now is it's firing this boolean through um, let's go back to the event graph um, and then it's going into a branch if it's true the player's camera becomes active first and if it's false the enemy's camera becomes uh, first I haven't set up any montages yet so nothing actually happens so we just push it through um, and then either the player is going to attack or the enemy is going to attack now I'm going to carry this on in the next episode from here um, we'll start with the player because that's what I have set up and then we'll move on to the enemy once that's done but it's just a it's just a rule of order right there's no dialogue box or anything so again if I play just before we finish it's just a rule of order so I've gone into this my level 10 her badger is definitely gonna have a higher speed rate than my level 4 Oster here so let's just use scratch that's none because I, I've got the level thing set up and there's nothing in there um, so let's use scratch and it does a decent amount of damage we go first and then as you can see with the cameras I use growl his, his attack goes down um, he then moves but obviously it's not set up to move yet um, so then it goes back to the main camera so again changes to him his health goes down he then gets to have a turn um, and then it goes back to the main screen obviously things will be slowed down a little bit there'll be animations to go in here there'll, there'll be lots of different things to go in here um, but for now um, our level 10 her badger is carrying the team well we need to get to a point where we can start capturing some other stuff but that'll come once I've done the enemy attack um, and then so on and so forth it's it's messy code it's really messy code this is this is quite advanced stuff and it's the first time I've ever done anything this advanced actually um, it's a lot of new learning for myself because um, I'm used to making first person and third person shoes I'm not used to making capture creature games <laughs> but um, it's fun I'm loving it and I'm um, we're gonna keep going so um, don't forget to like don't forget to leave a little comment if you're stuck on anything please please don't forget uh, f feel free to shout or join the discord and talk to us there's loads of us in there now it's growing every day and there's so many of us that's doing exactly the same thing so it's good to pick each other's brains um, and of course don't forget to hit that sub button if you're not already it's free to do and you can always change your mind down the line guys thank you so much take care bye